and welcome back this is part two of the restoring some life into the 1997 honda accord if you haven't seen part one i suggest you go and watch it so right here we're going to start off with just cleaning the post on the battery it wasn't really a big issue but it doesn't hurt to get it done And I'm just about finished cleaning up these posts with this tool. Now I don't get to use this tool often but it just mainly sits in my toolbox and it's there when you need it. Now I'm going to apply a little bit of uh, dielectric grease on the post. I'm not sure if it does anything at all, if there's any benefits to it. But it helps me sleep at night. You know when you rub the dielectric grease on your chest, kind of like the Vicks Vapor Rub, it has the same effect. And moving on to the power steering pump, obviously this thing has some leaks and it can use some attention. But instead of wasting money on a brand new pump, I decided to just buy a brand new o-ring set. So I'm going to try to take off this front cover and replace the o-ring and hopefully to fix this leak that we have. Okay, so I've replaced that O-ring and I'm trying to reassemble all of this, but it didn't go so well. All of this just kind of sprung out like a jack-in-a-box. So now that this part is out, it only made sense to change these O-rings as well. So that's what I did. Okay, so here's a night and day difference of new fluid versus the stuff that came out of the car. Now, I did not do a complete flush on the car. All I did was siphon out as much of the old fluid as I can. I added new fluid, turned the car on, turned the steering left and right just to get the fluids mixing. And again, I kept repeating that process, siphoning out, adding more until I was happy with it. And now that the O-rings are installed and the power steering pump didn't explode when I turned it on, it's time to give it a cleaning. Okay, and moving on to the brake system. Now, I was able to flush this system out completely. So after I filled this up here, I went to each caliper and bled it individually. So throughout the whole system, uh, minus the ABS system if you want to be picky. But throughout the whole system, there is brand new brake fluid. Uh, there really isn't much else to say on it. It went pretty smooth. Now if you remember in part 1 I showed that the driver door handle was all busted up so I did get a replacement but it's an aftermarket one. Uh, it's not painted or anything but that's okay as long as it functions and it does function properly. The problem I had with it is it just doesn't fit all too well so if you're going to get one of these I would steer away from these aftermarket ones. 
and now it's time to clean up a few things in the interior nothing too specific just a few things that were bothering me another thing i cleaned up was the actual button for the sunroof or the moonroof whichever it is but you could not tell what the button was for until you actually press it because it was just completely filled in like dirt and grime so i got that cleaned up it turned out pretty nice and moving on to the radio now in the first video i mentioned that the previous owner said that the radio was all busted up and the face would not stay on it so I went ahead and ordered a brand new radio which is the same exact model. It turns out there was nothing wrong with the radio that was already in the car. It, he just wasn't installing it properly. He was supposed to hook it on the left side and clip it in on the right side. I'm not sure how hard that is to do for some people. Anyway, you could say I wasted money on this new radio. But if you put the two radios side by side, you could see there was a clear difference as far as wear and tear on the old one. So at the end of the day, we just have a fresh brand new looking radio. Initially, I came in here to do the brakes and that's when I discovered the problems with the CV shafts. So it only makes sense to go ahead and get them done first. Now this is one job I was not looking forward to, which is the reason why I kept pushing it off. Um, I just think it's a design on how Honda just designed this whole thing. I mean, you gotta change your wheel bearings whenever you wanna change your brakes. I don't know if they were hoping that you could not get this done, like the average uh, Joe could not get this done in his garage and he would be forced to bring it into the dealer for repairs. I don't know if that's, I don't know what was going on with that. But anyways, I got it done and enjoy.
I noticed that one of the wheel stubs is broken when the car came in, so there's no better time to take advantage of this. Now I'm just gently tapping on the wheel bearing just to get it started but I'm actually going to use the four fasteners to kind of press it in. As long as you work your way back and forth between all four fasteners and try to keep the pressure nice and even, you should be able to get this wheel bearing pressed in pretty easy. I usually work in the garage alone but sometimes I can use an extra hand. In that case I just call on the Holy Spirit. Hey I take any help I can get. I'm actually pretty excited that I get to use my Astro wheel bearing press kit for the first time so that's a plus and I actually put that end in the freezer just to help it press in easier. Now before you press in the hub into the wheel bearing there's two things that you don't want to forget. Number one the rotor. That's going to be a bad day if you forget the rotor. Second of all the dust shield. You have to put the dust shield on before you put anything back together. That Astro wheel bearing kit was actually really easy to use and it had no problem doing this job. Okay, so we have the CV shafts, rotor, wheel bearing, and front brake pads done on this side. So now we're just going to go on the right side of the car and repeat the same exact process.
as you can see this race put up a bit of a fight the one on the left side of the car actually came off really easy And of course we have to do the inner and outer tie rods on this car. Just like the front brake setup, I don't like the way the inner tie rod is set up. I don't know what it is about this car and how they designed it, but whatever. It gives me an opportunity to use a tool that's actually been sitting in my garage for a while collecting dust, which is the Harbor Freight inner tie rod tool. So let's put it to the test. And there we go, it was actually pretty easy to use. I think my days of fighting with inner tie rods are over. Now I did do the same exact thing on the left side of the car with the inner and outer tie rods, but I don't have any footage of that. And that's because I plan on shooting a separate video, kind of on doing a review on that Harbor Freight tool. So keep an eye out for that.
I'm bleeding. Are you okay? I stabbed myself. Are you okay though? Yeah, these things are razor sharp. So that's pretty much it and as you can tell I put a lot of work into this car and putting these two videos together so I really hope you enjoyed them. Don't forget to leave a comment I always appreciate those. In case anyone was wondering I paid $575 for the car, $790 for parts so my cousin has a grand total of $1365 to reimburse me. If you liked the video give it a thumbs up if you're considering subscribing don't forget to hit that notification bell and like always thanks for watching.